So we are taking a look at this Monson SMPS. It's a 200 watt unit from Monson. It's a LM210B48. So this is a 48 volts output at 4.4 amps roughly. It's a made in China unit. It's uh, extremely similar to the Meanwell LRS series in terms of uh, pricing and specifications. And this brand has been advertising quite a bit. So let's take a closer look. As you can see, the unit is extremely compact. Even though it's 200 watts, it's uh, quite small. It measures about 18 centimeters length, just three centimeters in height and about uh, 10 centimeters wide. So it's actually quite small. Uh, for example, here's one of those uh, no-name Chinese uh, power supplies. Uh, this one uh, claims to be uh, 360 watts, but uh, you wouldn't use it that far, right? So as you can see, it's actually quite small. So it's completely passively cooled and there's no fan inside. So I'll show you. So there's absolutely no fan inside. And as you can see, the construction is actually quite good. It doesn't look cheap at all. Like one of the first things that you notice is the output inductor. It's uh, actually a PQ type of ferrite core. And they have used Litz wire, as you can see. They have used Litz wire practically everywhere in the transformer and this, which is uh, proper when you're switching at such high frequencies due to the skin effect. And uh, it actually looks quite good. Main class X cap, the count mode choke, and uh, the rectifier is actually heat synced. In uh, one of many of the Chinese power supplies, it's actually not heat synced. And this is one of the most popular things to fail besides your main switching transistors of course and your main switching transistors are obviously covered in the um, this thermal uh, thing and uh, one thing i don't get is there are vents here but uh, there's a piece of paper blocking it and that is gunked to the capacitor i'm not sure why and these are your main output diodes so it looks quite nice we'll take a better look at it well, let's uh, take the PCB out and have a closer look. As for the bottom, the bottom does have an insulating sheet. It's some sort of a scruffy, rough kind of a paper, not exactly any kind of plastic or such. Looking at the main PCB, well, these three are your inputs. The live goes through a 6.3 amp slow blow fuse. Then there's a class X2 cap 820 nanofarads from a brand called WMEC. And there is actually a common mode choke which has been mounted with its own uh, fiberglass board which is quite nice. This is a thing of its own. And there is a isolating piece which is also some fiberglass material gunked right in the middle so that it doesn't arc over on the inside. There's two 3 ohm uh, NTCs, 10 millimeters diameter. There's your main rectifier which is uh, 1000 volts, 10 amps, 1010. And there's a, your two main capacitors, Samsung branded, 330 microfarads, 200 volts, both of them in series. And as for the protection, the, there is no MOV at the input. The, there is a placeholder, but it has been not been populated. But there are MOVs, Walson branded MOVs. These are right across the capacitors. So this one's in parallel with this cap and this one's in parallel with this cap. So technically these two uh, are in series, just like the capacitors are. Let me just check the model number. The model number on this is 20, 241K10E. These are like a 200 volt withstanding or something. So I'm not sure why they omitted this one here. Could be a design choice. Doesn't look like a monetary choice because everything else seems reasonable. They wouldn't, they wouldn't just remove one of these from the BOM just for cost. So it's probably some sort of design choice. I read some, uh, this arrangement I've seen this elsewhere also, not just in this Monson power supply, where there's an MOV at the input, but there's a across the caps. 
and somewhere I read uh, that the class X cap interferes with the working of the MOV raising the clamping voltage to a much higher level so I'm not very sure what's going on okay there's a lot of class Y caps let me tell you the locations there's obviously two from uh, line to earth and neutral to earth then there is one more over here which actually connects the minus of the rectifier connects the minus of the rectifier to earth basically capacitively then there is this uh, there is class Y caps over here connecting the primary and the secondary side of course these two form the high frequency return path for all of the noise uh, energy which goes through the capacitive coupling of the transformer to the secondary side so this is your uh, return path for that and there is one more class Y cap which is connected to the earth connects earth to the negative terminal of the output so if you look underneath you can see the isolation running right along from here all the way up to here and one nice thing is there's isolation slot under the underneath the fuse itself so even if the fuse blows it won't actually arc over here and there's one more spark gap which is right uh, underneath the common mode choke the, these are the two coils so if there's a lightning strike most of the energy is high frequency energy they would you know arc over and drop a lot of the voltage here itself before getting to the rectifier and as for the uh, main side these uh, these are actually MOSFETs these two are actually MOSFETs and this is actually a two switch forward based on this controller which is a NCP1252 and uh, this is your high side MOSFET this is your low side MOSFET and there is a gate drive transformer right over here so gate drive transformer drives those two MOSFETs and your two main diodes for the supply is this one and this one for the two switch forward and there's obviously discharging resistors over here and across the caps so that's fine at the output we have two MUR2040 super fast recovery diodes and they have their own snubbers across them they haven't been omitted and there's uh, on the secondary side there is no major IC as such and there's basically TL431s and various regulators and diodes and stuff other passives and as for the output capacitors these output capacitors are Samsung branded 220 microfarads at 63 volts and we do have an adjustment over here interesting thing is that there are two optocouplers EL817s from uh, Everlight Semiconductor not just one unlike in your regular PSUs one interesting thing is that these two N-channel MOSFETs they actually have two capacitors across their drain to source if you see here there is actually this capacitor connecting drain to source this capacitor across drain to source so technically we don't put uh, capacitors across drain to source maybe they are attempting some sort of soft switching or you know some different sort of switching and these two diodes which are your main uh, diodes for the two switch forward they are these two they are not of the same model I can't tell what the model is but they are definitely uh, different diodes one thing to note is this particular model does have a selector switch you have to set it to 230 or 115 so you couldn't make a mistake and blow up your PSU there's one more model which has a very similar model number the one I have is LM210B48 which has a selectable range and there's one more model called LM212B48 I think and that one's only a dedicated AC input range of 176 to 264 volts AC so you can uh, get this without uh, the switch also but just make sure uh, you know if you get this one you, it's set at the right position I don't know if the other models also have to switch forward but this one is mm, this thermal sleeve on the main transistors actually extend all the way up to the legs so even though you, though you have the metal body you still get the isolation from the leg to the metal piece
because it covers it all the way and yes they are also thermally gunked there is also a temperature sensor on the main output inductor as you can see some sort of maybe a NTC or something on the two output diodes there are RC snubbers with large resistors and those SMD capacitors right here and here 